Brand new designs are up on the Edge Redbubble, werewolves, spiders, FedEx amphibians, protocrocs, and more. Go check out the Redbubble with links in the description and comment section below. According to Dr. Eduardo Valdez Hevia, a well-known physician of the bizarre and unusual crystalline conjunctival hypertrophy is a rare symptom of heavy metal buildups in the blood, most commonly of cadmium. Small deposits of the metal in the conjunctiva eventually grow into relapsing structures that may protrude out of the eye, such as this advanced case. As such, there may be an excess of floaters in the eye. One would be able to see them in the corners of the eye or floating across the center. These may be the first indication of the microcrystals which form inside the eye. Please, you must be aware of these early symptoms so that treatment can be applied early on. One such symptom is believing a photoshopped image you found on the internet. This is a photoshop image created by the ever-talented Eduardo Valdez Evia, who also created the images and story behind the megalomorpha that I've covered in its own video. Here he has created a horrific condition in which large spikes of metallic crystals spire out of the eye to cause unknown amounts of pain. Funny thing is, there's a real life condition similar to this that really affects people. It's called cystinosis, and it too involves metal crystals in the eye. Cystinosis is what's called a lysosomal storage disease. It's also termed an autosomal recessive disorder. These fancy medical terms mean that the disease stems from a problem with storing lysosomes. Lysosomes being a membrane-bound organelle in the animal cell which help to break down different kinds of biomolecules. The case of cystinosis results in an abnormal accumulation of cysteine, which is an oxidized form of the amino acid cysteine. The whole autosomal recessive part of the other term for this disorder refers to how it passed from one person to another. The disorder cannot be passed from person to person because it is a heritable trait passed from parent to offspring. It's extremely rare, affecting about 1 in 100 to 200,000 newborns, with a total of around 2,000 known individuals alive today with the disorder. For some reason, the disorder has a higher incidence in Brittany, France, where the stats are more like 1 in 26,000. The disorder itself results in an accumulation of free cysteine in those lysosome organelles I mentioned earlier, to the point at which they are deposited as crystal formations from cell to cell and throughout the body. The symptoms differ a tad because there are three types of cystinosis. There's nephropathic cystinosis, intermediate cystinosis, and non-nephropathic or ocular cystinosis. Symptoms of nephropathic cystinosis show themselves in infants as poor growth and specific types of kidney issues, like renal Falcone syndrome. Those problems then cause the loss of important minerals, salts, fluids, and other nutrients the body needs to function properly. The loss of these substances is what causes that poor growth and sometimes bowed bones like what is seen in rickets. The imbalance of bodily nutrients can also lead to increased urination, thirst, dehydration, and higher concentration of acid in the blood. In comes the part about eye crystals that overlaps with the Photoshop by Eduardo. By age 2, the person affected by cystinosis may have cysteine crystals forming in the cornea. The buildup of these crystals in the eye causes the eye to be extra sensitive to light. It doesn't look or form like the crude, jagged, paranormal metal shards in Eduardo's image, but a light shown across the cornea will illuminate the crystals, looking more like condensation upon a glass window. As if it couldn't get any worse, if the affected individual doesn't receive treatment by around age 10, complete kidney failure may occur. With treatment, the individual may live to their teens or 20s without experiencing this kind of kidney failure. Unfortunately, I'm not done with symptoms as some patients with the disorder may also experience muscle atrophy, blindness, inability to swallow, impaired sweating, decreased hair and skin pigmentation, diabetes, thyroid problems, and nervous system problems. Who knew Eduardo's image could hide an even more terrifying truth? Now we come to the next types of cystinosis, intermediate cystinosis. The symptoms of this form of cystinosis mirror those of nephropathic cystinosis, 
except that they pop up at a later age. It typically affects folks at the age of 12 to 15. As such, the main symptoms that first occur are the corneal crystals and malfunctioning kidneys. No treatment, just like in nephropathic cystinosis, results in complete kidney failure, but this time in the late teens and mid-twenties. The last form, non-nephropathic or ocular cystinosis, results in the mildest symptoms. Crystals form in the cornea with this type and result in the accompanying phobia of light, and that's about it. Unusual growth rates and kidney malfunctions don't usually occur. Those crystals actually form in a different way to Eduardo's image too. They are hexagonal in structure and colorless. As such, they can be difficult to tell apart from uric acid crystals, which is the stuff urine is partially made up of. You can tell them apart by blasting them with polarized light. How does this happen? Remember the heritable recessive part? Well, they are what's called autosomal recessive. That means the trait is located on an autosomal gene. Autosomes being any chromosome that doesn't have anything to do with sex. For an individual to be born with a disorder, they must have two copies of it as it is recessive. At the base level, it occurs due to a mutation in a gene located on chromosome 17, the one that codes for cystinazine. How do we treat this rare disorder? The prescription usually involves cystamine, available as capsules or eye drops. Cystinosis sufferers may also be given sodium citrate to treat the blood acidity. If the kidneys become bad enough, transplantation would be the last option. I shudder to think of any more real-life related things our Photoshop mad scientists will concoct next. Also, I'm not a doctor and not an expert in medical sciences. I'm not giving advice like even a little bit, so don't take anything I've said as medical advice. I did do my research though, so it's not like I'm lying. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.